So once again, I'm very happy to be here to say something about the teachings of Buddha Shakyamuni. There are different types of practices to do the actual practice. There, there are different ways of reaching to the actual practices. From the very beginning, for example, just to turn our mind towards the Dharma, there are some teachings. If you can follow that, then your mind can be diverted towards the Dharma. As soon as your mind is stable and diverted towards dharma, then from the very beginning it is necessary to do the practice of taking refuge. Then after that your mind becomes more spacious, more broader with things for the living beings. So. After that, it is necessary to do the practice of bodhicitta and as soon as you stable, stabilize the practice of bodhicitta, then you can do the practice of offerings. Through offerings, you can accumulate a lot of merit. It is necessary to reach the actual practice. These are very important. And then after that, it is also very important to purify our defilement, obscurations, difficulties, problems, frustrations. So for that, there is again another te- practices like uh, purification practice. Through that, you can do the purification. And after purifying all those defilements, then normally you can, you are able to do the actual practice. Now you are eligible, or what should I say, you are capable to do the right practice. So till now, all these kind of practices are only to reach the actual practice. So today, I think so, it is necessary to talk something about the actual practice, that is Guru Yoga. Now in Guru Yoga practice means Guru is the teacher, the master. Now you have to do some practice to become like your Guru, because your Guru is the inseparable of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. If you have a very strong faith and devotion to your root Guru, then the blessings of Buddhas are ever powerful, always there, ever present. Don't think that even though you tried for many years, but they, you didn't get any kind of result. Don't think that way. Now, there is a wrong view, saying that you tried for many years, but I didn't receive any te- uh, result because my Guru has no power. If you go on thinking that way, that is wrong view, because that obstructs your way of practicing, obstructs to begin like your Guru. So, it is important that you should treat your Guru as the embodiment of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Now here, Guru, actual practice Guru, Guru Yoga, now here Guru, I would like to say it is Guru Bhatma Sambhava, Guru Rumpuchi. So Guru Rinpoche, in essence Guru Rinpoche is the unification of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Now your teacher who, to whom you can talk 
फेस टू फेस ही इन द फॉर्म ऑफ दैट टीचर द इसेंस इज गुरु रंबे बट द फॉर्म इज योअर टीचर विथ होम यू कैन टॉक फेस टू फेस नाउ दैट टीचर विथ होम यू कैन टॉक एंड रिसीव टीचिंग पर्सनली यू कैन टॉक विथ हिम और हर नाउ द your guru or your master no matter how high his position is no matter how poor or rich it doesn't matter the guru or the teacher real teacher is that te- that a uh, person who can always guide you to become buddha who can always show you the path of enlightenment who can always help you to understand the, your own mind your own mind is the, is no other than buddha nature so you yourself is the buddha now in many teachings it is said that if we go on judging outwardly that is foolish way of thinking Yes outwardly it is also necessary it is also necessary i am not saying that that is not necessary it is necessary but if a person used to judge outwardly then normally sometimes because of our dualistic mind we see many mistakes many wrong actions of your guru and then your faith brocks you have to break down so that is why it is not necessary to judge outwardly your guru may be a female your guru may be a male he may be a monk he may be a nun he may be a lay lay person it doesn't matter he may be a white he may be a black it doesn't matter it doesn't matter the position is not important the person is not important the important is what he teaches if he is teaching you the real uh if he sh- shows you the real path towards buddha hood if he make you to recognize your real nature that is buddha nature within yourself then he is your guru there are different types of gurus some used to even your parents for example the children when they were born the first guru is their parents because they used to guide to do good things don't do these bad things but do these things do this way it is good for you don't do this it is bad for you in this way he used to teach the parents used to teach the children the first teacher is their parents and then slowly they the student that children were admitted in the schools they were taught something in the schools they are also your teacher they are also your guru they helps you to do something they are making your future they are helping you to develop your mind so don't treat that they are small they are also great they are also great so if we think that way and then try to listen to them try to do whatever they guide you that is helpful and then somewhere admitted in the monasteries or in the temples then the teachings of the buddha buddha were taught to them from the very beginning how to do the right things and how not to do the bad things or these were advised by the teachers so they are also your teachers 
Now, according to the Buddhist teachings, we say that we receive empowerment from your Guru. As soon as you receive the empowerment, he is your Guru again. And there are also some teachers who used to always guide you to understand the real nature of your mind. And that is also one type of your Guru. And a person who always used to guide you to recognize the Buddha nature and make you to understand that and lead you towards Buddha, uh, towards the highest state of enlightenment, the state of um, result, enlightenment. So, among them, your real root guru is that who always used to guide you to recognize your Buddha nature. That is your root guru. Maybe they, we can say that there are many teachers, but your root guru is that who used to guide you, who used to uh, help you to recognize your real nature. That is the root guru. So in this way, if you have a deep faith, strong faith and devotion to your teacher, to your guru, then normally normally the guru's blessings are really very strong, always there, with, always with you. You can practice anytime. There is no problem. So, in certain treaties, teachings, like Guru Rambache's teachings, From the very beginning, if you want to do the practice of Guru Yoga, now it is necessary that again you have to visualize the refuge tree, something like that. Again, that is necessary. So each time the refuge tree is there, that means you are making it a habit, daily habit, so that you can go on thinking on that. And the uh, method of visualization and the blessings receiving from them and the practices what you are doing if you go on treating them important and with deep faith and devotion if you can do that properly then you don't need any other teacher that is your teacher and it is also said the real teacher is inside here. The real teacher is here. If you try to meditate and if you try to understand the Buddha nature within yourself, then the real teacher, the real root guru is here, not outside. If you go on searching outside, that is wrong view again. Yes, for the beginners, it's true that you need many teachers. You have to go from place to place and search the teachers and receive many teachings from different teachers and treat them as your guide, treat them as your teacher, treat them as your master. They will also help you. But the real, the inner secret teacher is inside here. You can meditate and you can develop your understandings and you try to know the real nature of your mind, that is Buddha nature, try to recognize that, then only you will become Buddha. If your inner mind is not stable, if your inner mind uh, is not so strong, if your faith is not so strong, your devotion is not so clean, then no matter how learned you are, you can't understand your real nature. That, that is an obstruction. So it is necessary that you should know from the very beginning. <clears throat> and during that Guru Yoga practice, now you have to think that according to Guru Yoga practice, you think that where you are staying, is not an ordinary place. It is 
so vast like sky and it is a real buddha buddha's feel pure land you think that way buddha's pure land and in the middle of that you have to think that you yourself is in a form of vajra yogini vajra yogini doji nanjurma we say doji nanjurma now vajra yogini is a lady fully enlightened exalted dakini in a form of vajra yogini you have to think yourself in a form of vajra yogini and vajra yogini is in red color she she carries one curved knife in her right hand now this means curved knife this means it can destroy your ego it can it can destroy all your uh defilement ignorant egoism all these are destroying cutting by uh the curved knife this symbolizes like that and she carries one kapala skull made from the skull kapala and in kapala you have to think it is filled with a nectar pure nectar this symbolizes that it besto you all kind of accomplishments blessings everything it shows like that and also in some certain teachings it is said in the kapala there is red blood now this symbolizes that it destroys or dispels all kind of sufferings in this sansara and bestows you the accomplishment now you have to think that way and vajra yogini in the standing posture now in a standing posture you have to think that the left leg straight straight and the right leg is little bit bent she is standing in in standing posture in a naked naked body that shows that she is the pure wisdom dakini exaltation that means essence of all the buddha especially the dharma kayas standless sky like dharma kaya she is in that form but in a form of dakini now you have to think that way and she has a uh, three eyes and she is stepping on a corpse cor- dead body corpse she is stepping on the corpse under her feet there is a corpse or means the dead body now that dead body you must think that that is not dead body but that is that symbolizes your ego your arrogant your ego pride is in a form of corpse and she is standing stepping on that that means she crushed all your ego that means your body mind and speech is going to be transformed or changed into buddha's body speech and mind something like that now her three eyes is looking upward on the just above your forehead in the sky there is your root guru guru patma sambhav lovingly we say guru rambuchi actually his real name is guru patma sambhav we called him with love we called him as guru rambuchi that means the precious teacher simple word precious teacher that's all so guru rambuchi is in front of you now here where guru rambuchi is sitting 
Now you have to think that a padma flower used to grow in front of you, and it is not so small. It is almost filled all sky, and on that the sun moon disk Guru says used to sit on that. Now, Guru Ramachi in a form, uh, say, of eight years old, that means seems to be very young, you think that way, very lively. And now, you should not think that that is Guru Ramachi is just like our body, the karmic body, you should not think that way. Guru Ramachi's body is completely pure, like a uh, it's a unification of wisdom and clarity. That means you just think that uh, the reflection of the moon in the water, reflection of the moon in the water, and, okay, uh, reflection of the moon in the water means very clear, but you can't, touch it, there is no any form actually, but you can see it. And it is also like a rainbow, rainbow light, which can be seen but which cannot be touched oh, by our karmic body. We can't touch that. Now there also you must think that it is completely uh, pure. Even though there is a, seems to be a form we can see, but there is no any form. It is like a rainbow light. And don't think that your Guru Rinpoche is like a Thangka painting or like a statue which we can see uh, and touch it. And Thangka pen, painting is also, even though we used to keep like this, it seems to be standing, but it is flat. There is no any high or low, it is flat. Head, his feet, everywhere it is flat on the paper. His, his head is not upward, his leg is not downward, but it is completely one flat. Don't think that way, but it can help you to visualize. That's enough, that, this symbolizes like that. These are also we can term as the Nirmakaya form because it helps you. The statues are also in a form of Nirmakaya because it helps you but that is not the real body of uh, Buddhas. Now you have to think that way Guru Mishra in front of you in very lively, say eight years old, young and sitting on a Padma flower on the Padma flower there is sun and moon disk sitting on that. Now you have to think Guru Ramachay's cap. On the top of the cap there is a uh, vulture's uh, feather. It, it shows that his view, his doctrine, way of thinking. Now here if we say thinking that in Buddha's stage there is no thinking. It is beyond thinking actually. But it shows that he used to teach the highest teachings. He knows everything. That means Dzogchen views. He knows it, everything. Something like that. But anyhow, you just think it's a simple. If I go on saying that way, it may uh, seems to be a complicated. But you think that Guru Mishra used to uh, uh, escape. And then on the right hand, he used to carry one Vajra. It is also in the form he used to keep his right hand just on the right knee and his posture of sitting, the gesture of gesture is also in the king's posture, something like a right, uh, right leg a little bit uh, out stretching forward and in the left hand he carries one kapala. And in the Kabbalah there is the long life vase. You have to think that way. Filled with the nectar. That means he is the source of all the 
accomplishment. Through your Guru, the blessings are always there. And when he carries one Vajra on the right hand, it is in a form of subduing all the phenomena. Or the, uh, say, this appearance and all the phenomena, specially in a form of subduing means specially it subdues all the negative forces. We say Guru Nang Si Sina, that means he can subdue everything and he can give the blessings, accomplishments to those who are interested. It doesn't mean that he, though he won't give the blessings to those who are not interested. Because of their lack of faith, his blessings may not reach up to them, but Guru Mche's blessings are always there. For example, the sun is shining, sun is in, in the middle of the sky, that means ever brightful. But there are some animals, some birds, the owl, he is unable to use this. If the sun is there, he can't see anything. Only in night he can see. That means, even though sun used to give the uh, rays to all, it is beneficial to all, but it is sometimes very dangerous to some birds. For them, the sun shining means blind. They can't see anything in the daytime. So what I mean to say is, if, uh, if a person really wanted the blessings from Guru Rumbache, then they need the deep faith, I, I said, firmly grounded faith and devotion, deep devotion, then only the blessings of Guru Rinpoche is always there, like sun rays. It's useful to all. The sun never says that, I don't want to give light to the owl, to that bird. But because of their karmic actions, they are unable to use this. They are unable to receive this blessing. So like that, if we don't have the faith, then Guru Mishra's blessings are not there. Even though it is always Guru Mishra's compassion, especially to those who are really poor, who are very evil-minded, who are really doing some sort of um, bad actions with delusion, he is more compassionate to them. But what to do? Even though they are compassionate, it's not useful to them. That shows that we must need devotion to your teacher, faith towards your teacher. If you have that, then everything is open. Everything is always there. Guru Mujay said that, in Tibetan we say, That means, to those persons who have the faith, Guru Rinpoche is always sitting in front of you, your head. He is always here. Even though you sleep, Guru Mujay is here. He is looking at you. If you have faith, but if you don't have faith, you can't use that properly. You can't receive that. So it is necessary that Guru Rinpoche in front of you also, you must visualize something which is really exalted, something very pure completely enlightened person and he is here in front of you. He, his postures, his clothes, it's necessary if you can. Now here if I go on explaining each and every dresses, it will take time. You use the tanka paintings, you use the uh, statues, try to see them and you can also uh, see in some teach. Uh, some texts also, through there also you can understand it. So here I simply used to say the main action, gestures, his cape, his way of uh, sitting, his gestures, some instruments, what he carries in his hands, these are important. You just think that way and through that now, through Okay, 
Gurum says, in front of you now, you, you visualize that way. And from the heart of Guru Rumbache, from the wisdom mind of Guru Rumbache, now you have to think that from there it the rays, sun rays, some one more than one thousand ray, uh, sun's rays. That means rifle. It spreads from his mind. It just creates surroundings here. That means all.